you're talking about like drinking a lot of water. What about energy drinks? Because I drink so Dude, what are you eat? fucking talking about? Death no, dumb. You're no, joking, up, right? Hey everybody, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit different with this Ask Gary V. We're gonna mainly just do a five to seven setup because Hannah's been on the show before in a pod sessions, so I know some of the audience knows her and you can just Google that, you know, pod sessions with Hannah Brockman. But uh, I wanna let her set up this incredible book that's causing a bunch of buzz. Uh, to talk to us about what it is a little bit and then really what I wanna do, oh, let me go on Instagram, hold on. I want to do that as well. Uh, what I really want to do is, you got it, just, uh, is really allow you guys to have access. The more I think about the world, I always think about content, but access to me is a really big part of it. And so, actually, getting to ask uh, Hannah some questions. Oh, the nails are on fire. Oh, thank you. You got the, you got the word. <laughs> See, you know what? This might be the first time ever I wish I had nails because I just like the fact that you can like put words on them. Um, uh, I want to make sure that you guys get some access and so why don't you tell the Vayner Nation, everybody watching on streams and on the internets, uh, what this book's about and how it became to be. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I've been in the wellness world now for the last 10 years and um, started from a night, I was DJ nightlife and I kind of woke up one morning and I was just completely burnt out and I just really, you know, I felt like shit. My skin was terrible. My like, I was eating once a day. I was drinking a ton and I was basically up all night and sleeping all day. And so I kind of just said to myself, this lifestyle is not sustainable at all. How long did you do that lifestyle for? Um, for about three years. That was right. So after, you went hard. Yeah. And that was right after college. So, I mean, you're also you counting. You weren't ready to have college to be done. Yeah, with, so. <laughs> exactly. You're counting those college years too. And actually when I was in college, something pretty insane well it was you know my grandmother passed away and she actually had suffered from anorexia her whole life and when I was with her and she passed away it was one of those moments where I just kind of said to myself I I know I should devote myself to living the happiest and healthiest version of myself because that was something that she um, never did and so desperately I think wanted for her grandkids um And so between that happening and then waking up one day and feeling like absolute crap, I basically decided that there needed to be a huge overhaul in my lifestyle and that I needed to take my health seriously. And even at that young of an age. Yeah, I was about 22 years old. And um, I just I noticed that I had gotten away from all the things that really made me feel good. Wait, you graduated college at 19? Um, or were you 25 because it was three years after college? No, I guess, oh yeah, you're, I guess you're right. I guess that's around 24 yeah, and I graduated college at 21. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, it was just one of those moments where I, I be, yeah, very good, intense listener right over here. Um, and See? so it was just you guys one, didn't of, think I could. one of those things where I, I realized that I had done so much damage to myself. So that's when I really kind of like just got on the health journey. I started um, exploring different experts, trying to figure out what was going on with me, why was food making me feel so shitty, um, how to take care of myself. And I kind of grew up with a very active back, like as a kid, I was a dancer, I played sports, um, I loved cooking, and I just wanted to get back to the things that really made me feel great. And so um, I started meeting with all these amazing doctors, taking all these tests, trying all these different diets. I ended up starting my first startup in the beauty world, kind of of launched my like beauty curiosity um, and it kind of put me as like an expert in the beauty world and so over the last 10 years I've really amassed all this crazy info um, regarding health beauty and fitness um, and wellness overall and well-being and mindfulness so this book is really a download of everything I've learned over the 10 years um, I think we can all understand that wellness has become such a crowded space. Yeah, and I, was, I was just about to ask you, you know, as you were talking, I was like, okay, the follow-up here is so much has happened when you first started flirting with it. You know, just if you just even think about Instagram's growth and the permission oh, yeah. for anybody to go into the space and mm-hmm. in whatever their interpretation it is, like, what's your take on that? It, my take is that basically... Any, it make the it makes it accessible for anyone and everyone to have an opinion on what works, what doesn't work, and a lot of this can be like 
fake news, false advertising. Yeah, just a lot of misinformation. Yeah, right? exactly. And it can also lead the customer or their viewer to have a really hard time of knowing where the entry point is and understanding what's the one thing that they want to try or what, you know, and trying to also figure out what's not a fad and what's actually going to make a difference in their life. So I've tried all the fads because I'm a huge guinea pig and that's what I love to do. And I love to be ahead of trends. Um, Hence me being on this journey, you know, for the last 10 years and it really coming to popularity, I think in the last five, but um, yeah, so this book has like a ton of accessible ways of entering in the wellness world. Um, Because I feel like, you know, media has really made wellness feel like a very inaccessible boutique fitness, organic food, like white, bland scene. And I, that's really I, not I the agree. case at all. And everyone, you no, know. No, I mean, there's some, like, like I was just thinking about a couple grandmas I know who are like, <laughs> just die hard, like, no, it's just Dove soap. Like, right. Like, you know, like like 93-year-old grandmas, you're like, oh my God, and like, oh, just Dove soap for the last 63 years. Like, right. I feel like you need to figure it out for yourself. Totally. Like, Dove soap might have worked for Gertrude, right. but might suck for Calvin. Right, totally. And I think, you know, one of the, <laughs> one of the big <laughs> things that I talk about is how I learned to listen to my body. And what I'm hoping that people really get from this book is a little bit more understanding of themselves. And that I hope this book asks the right questions to help you kind of figure out what you're maybe not really being truthful with yourself about um, and how you can better understand yourself. Because I think it's really true. It it, it really... Just saying what worked for me isn't going to work it's for you. It's a strategy of one. Totally. Like the reason... By far, the thing that I hope most people hear when I talk about business and marketing is about self awareness. Right. Like, which is what led me to insecurity, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, oh, people are not willing to be themselves because they're worried about judgment of others. Right. And I think a lot of that, you know, I'm thinking about it quite a bit on like mindset, but I have so much empathy, especially for women around physical appearance. Like, that's tough. Like, loving yourself under complete like conditions of the pressure of what judgment of beauty or financial success or alpha male or females like there's it's just a lot totally I talk so much about the mindset as well and it really understanding um that you know how to tune out the haters like how to really focus in and not compare yourself to other people I mean there's so much out there that like make it really difficult for women to feel comfortable in their own skin. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I talk about is kind of body confidence and like my own like journey of identity as well, Um, which I feel like people can relate to. Where are you on your journey? Like current state of the union of your life going through this, Mm -hmm. you know, being public in a lot of ways, yeah. having a little bit of it girl status and all that. Like, where are you, like, right this minute, like, you'll look back at this video in three years and be like, oh crap, I was killing that. My question is, what are you, where are you best right now in your historical journey? Like, you're best about, like, you like your eyes for the first time ever. Like, like literally, wh- right this second, where are you at the best and what are you most continuously struggling, like, what are you most struggling with or trying to hack or get better at? And what are you the best at in your own context? So right now, I feel like where I'm where I'm at right now is really for the first time feeling 100% comfortable with within my own skin, like in my body. I feel like I am like you know heavier than I was four years ago, but I like love my curves, every inch of them. I feel like I'm stronger than I ever have been, um, and so I'm just feeling. about kind of like my body goals and just like being not to say that I don't have more like gym goals and whatever but that I feel really confident like you're just like this is the this ne- is me. This, this is, is my DNA. Yeah, this, yeah, and here's where the margins are. Totally, I'm not gonna be ex. Like to me, I've always that. Like to me, guys and girls, it's like look, like. I'm like, there's certain things that no matter what you do aren't going to happen. It's a DNA game. Absolutely. And, and people I feel like really are delusional. I've totally figured out like my eating habits, what works for me. I'm on top of them. I'm what like, works for you? Eating just a ton of vegetables and lean protein. Kills and, for you. Yeah. And it, but and it's you love really, veggies? I love veggies. I love it. You love who? I don't eat really processed food, not a lot of grains. If I'm going to eat animal proteins, it really needs to be pasteurized and like wild caught fish. What do, you, what do you allow yourself to be a guilty pleasure currently? 
Um, I mean, chocolate is like, but I don't even think of it as a guilty pleasure. Like, chocolate is good for you. Well, that and means I you're on some it. dark chocolate, like high cacao count. I love That's it. Like a big an difference eighty-two percent. No, of course. Okay, yeah, you're right. I don't. Yeah. I don't eat candy, yeah. but I do love like my eighty-two percent. But like. But that's not guilty. Like, what is your, like, I'll eat, like, some Sour Patch Kids when nobody's really looking. I actually don't. See, this is the, people ask me this, but I really feel like I've trained myself to think that, like, fruit is a guilty pleasure. By the way, by the way, in my best eating habits, which ran for, like, two and a half years, I'm off of it right now because I'm more into muscle gain, which is giving me room to be a little ridiculous. Yeah. But I know in six months, me and Mike are coming back. He's coming back in for six months to, like, really get back to it. Like, Fruit was like, like fruit was like an enemy. Yeah. That was okay. like, there's sugar. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like now I'm like, I'll eat a Twizzlers. Like I'll do some shit. I mean, I guess like dirty nachos. Yeah. Okay. Every once in a yeah, while, yeah. like, yeah. You know, like around you put that of, shitty cheese on top of it. Yeah. Sugar. Like I'm, yeah. yeah. And I'm not even making them myself. Like I will go out to like a pub. Right, yeah. Like Warren 77 makes like kind of the best nachos. Yes. And <laughs> I'm totally here for that. Um, once in a blue moon. Uh, everybody watching on all the live streams, Instagram, you guys too, the Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, please put in your phone number right now, Calvin, who's in for Andy. By the way, the the young crew's here. Andy, Sid, D-Rock, <laughs> they're all in India right now for Sid's wedding. Big shout out to Sid, congratulations. I guess he's gone for like ever. Like that's how he's rolled. Yeah. Like, I think the other guys are back in a couple weeks. So the, the young crew's in here, so Calvin's in for Andy. Put in your phone numbers right now on the streams. Uh, I want to talk about health, wellness, influencer marketing. Hannah has done a great job building her brand. Please. Yeah, I was going to say, you've been so instrumental, I feel like, with what I'm, my whole, what I'm even doing with the book and the promo and everything. And I'll, I'm so excited to tell you that I've been on my Instagram ads and my Facebook ads. And it's, you're right, it's so easy. And I don't know why I was even hesitating. It's similar to fitness. I can tell everybody right now if they want to get into way better shape and like be happier. Sleep, like listen to your body and sleep Mm -hmm. more or what's appropriate to what your body's doing. Mm -hmm. Eat, Mm -hmm. like like stop eating fats and sugar, like, Mm -hmm. like and work out. Like, like it's like the formula is basic. The executions for some reason. Everything that I spit, yeah. and you're referring to after the last time, one of the times we hung out, yeah. like when the cameras were off, I'm like, listen to me, yeah. execute this, it will be, you know, you have something different than most. You have the fact that you had organic success because of who you are, how you executed. A lot of people, so like people who have organic success, mm-hmm. don't do the ads and things of that nature because there's organic success. Right. Other people just don't put in the work. There's a million reasons why, but it's funny. Like, it makes me so happy that you're doing it because it is a moment in time. Totally. Like, this will go away. Right. Like, one day Instagram will be MySpace. I can't even, in- that like, seems so it's terrifying. Well, the reason it's terrifying <laughs> is, you know, what really scares me is, and you don't have this problem, even though Instagram's so important to you, same for me, 98% of people watching right now, if Instagram broke and disappeared off the face of the earth tomorrow, they would disappear off the face of the earth. Right. So I think, you know, if you're my quick little PSA if you're watching right now is get your LinkedIn and your blog and mm-hmm. your email and your text messaging platform and your Twitter and your Facebook and your podcast game up. YouTube, mm-hmm. like why right. are you one dimensional? Right. Anyway, you got a phone. Let's do it. So the book came out last week. The book came out last we week need to on link Tuesday. The book. This is so exciting that we're gonna call someone. Yeah. Who's the name? Erica. Erica. This is so cool. Yeah, this I feel is like fun. I'm like old school. Like, yeah, this is like old school, like radio, like sports radio. Yeah, like, I feel like I'm in an episode of Mrs. Irvin Maisel. Irvin Irvin has been forwarded uh, to an automatic what? voice message system. Four zero four six zero four nine nine three four. Message? Is oh, yeah. not available okay, at the tone. Please you record it. your message. When you have finished recording, follow you may hang lead, up okay? or okay. press one for more options. Erica, it's Gary V. You fucked up. It's Hannah. also Hannah Bronfman. I was hoping we could chat, but I guess we'll But we talk. can't because you fucked up. Okay. <laughs> See ya. All right, we'll go to the next one. So, Hannah, the book came out Thursday, Tuesday of last week? Tuesday of last week on January. I know, it's always yeah. Tuesday. 
Jan- oh, I see. New year, new year. Uh, okay, so that's where you guys position right. it. Which, who's by the way, stu- who's the, who's the stump? Har- Harper Collins. Harper that's Wave. My, mine is Harper Collins too. By the way, the whole New Year, New You. Yes. I mean, I get it, but for me, I always say there's no better time to start something than today. I agree. I mean, like I'm like I didn't do it this year, but like three or four years in a row, I would make like a New Year's resolution video on like December 13th, and I'm like, why are you waiting it's 19 totally. days? Yeah, like right. But yeah. for book purposes, totally, it's like a good time of year to yeah. get the placements you wanted. Absolutely. Absolutely. Trent. 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 Trent's gonna have something. Hopefully, Trent will answer. So we're gonna go into ha- like for a lot of people, books are a big thing, and I want to mm-hmm. know how the book went for you. Okay, yeah, we're calling someone. Hello? Trent. It's What's Gary the- V. Sorry. Sorry. It's all right. It's Gary What's V. Right, brother, I got you. You, you, you got are me. Are you serious right now? Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, Trent. Holy shit. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? You're on with- You don't know how long I've been waiting for this shit. Oh my God. Trent, where where are you from? I am from Texas. What part? Uh, Fort Worth. Love it. Do you have a question for Hannah? I do, I do. Hey, Trent. So, oh my God. I can't breathe right now. My heart is covered. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, so big question for you. So I work full time. I build airplane parts um, here in Fort Worth. I am a content creator and I'm trying to get my health on track. Mm. But I mean, I work like 40 hours a week here and then like another 20 doing my hustle. How do I fit it in? Well, you're working part time at 60 hours a week. So you got unlimited time, bro. Uh. No, <laughs> Go ahead, I, would, okay. I would say I would say there's if you you know there's a whole method to the first seven minutes of when you wake up and how that's supposed to really help your metabolism speed up. So I would say hold on, hold on, hold on. I apologize because I was making jokes. Like, what did you say about the first seven minutes? So within the first seven minutes of waking up, that's when you're. Um, that's like when your all your shit is spiking. So like your and Hannah, your is cortisol, this like no joke? And you may not know. Like, is this like been like like stake in the ground, like tobacco causes cancer kind of like, or is that the current hypothesis of culture? No, I mean- I'm, I'm asking, the, I don't know. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a real thing that cortisol, I'm not sure about Trent specifically, yes, but of course. your cortisol should, if you're in healthy shape, should Understood. spike in the morning. And that's what basically helps you metabolize and burn calories all day long. And so what should one do in the first seven so minutes? So within the first seven minutes, I would say get a five minute workout in, which literally means do one minute of jumping jacks, one wall, one minute of a wall plank, or a wall sit rather. A which by the way, a- I apologize to interrupt because I've been being good on this episode. But when I first started working out for real five years ago, the wall, wall sit, sit is hard. Destroyed yeah. my life. Yeah, it's C- fucking the hard. only thing that I like cried about. See, so I'm doing a wall. This sit, shit, right? Like yes, this, yes. This one? Not only sorry, one, sorry for that, interrupting. Yeah. So you're talking about hit, yeah, right? Like H I T T stuff. Like, yeah, but yeah, not, not even. But hit also really does mean like getting your heart rate rate up in a really intense way. And I'm kind of also just talking about even doing a wall sit, which doesn't like technically mean a lot of cardio. It does get your heart rate up. So even doing that and doing a minute a minute of sit-ups and you can do something different every day one minute of exercise with five different exercises is five minutes right when you wake up you can do it right next to your bed and that'll kind of set you up for a better execution of your day I mean it It sounds like 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 I was just like you know what I'm gonna wake up and now I'm just gonna run out of my house like 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 in a dead like I was I was sleeping eight seconds ago I'm gonna put on shorts and t-shirt like I'm gonna wear shorts and t-shirt when I sleep now and just run out to New York City is that okay? I mean, Verify. that's really Just intense. It. It's <laughs> yeah. really intense. Well, I like going zero to 100. <laughs> also, Trent, I'm not sure exactly what your health goals are, um, whether it's like, you know, losing weight, gaining muscle. Like well, I let's can't... ask him. That's what's cool. Yeah. Well, Trent, honestly, what's your goal, bro? With you, so my goals, I want to, uh, I'm running 5Ks, 10Ks, 15Ks, and then I have a Spartan race in June and then another one in October. Whoa. And so I'm, I'm really like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to push it to like, the very next level because everything that I'm doing right now, so I just started getting really hard in my videography. So I closed the Century 21 for like a year contract. So we're on course to do 40K next year. And so I'm just, oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm talking to y'all guys right now. I'm sorry, I'm like- No, don't worry, Trent, it's real. This is not a dream. So Trent, are you trying to win the New York Marathon? Like where are we going with this? I just, I just want to push my body to the next level. That, that's it. Like, it's nothing more than. Like, that. you like, like it? Like, it's f- like I'm. I love it. I it's fun. Love it. So I, I'm super competitive. So I used to box, but I got knocked out by a kid named Mufasa. Pro tip: <laughs> Never fight a kid named Mufasa. He will win nine times out of ten <laughs> all the time. Like but, Mufasa like, from Lion super, King? Um, yes. 
like the kid's name was Mufasa. That was his fighting name. Oh Hannah, so how does it in your new book? Down. In your new book, is there like tricks to beat Mufasa in a boxing match? Um, no. Okay. Not okay. Really, but I do talk about boxing a lot because it is one of those kind of it's trendy. A, it's well, it's very mental, right? If you're not focused on what you're doing and being present, you're gonna get knocked out by Mufasa. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which nobody wants. To no, no one wants that. But nobody what I was gonna that. say in terms of your goals of like the 5K and the Spartan races and stuff like that, like. Obviously, agility moves and and getting your endurance up is going to be something that's going to like really help you in those particular types of events. Um, you're so, such a blessing. So I don't know if you're what you do on the weekends. I mean, it sounds like you don't have that much time, but like if you go it's out to like 16. tough like a tough mutter or just even get one of those like ladder ropes and 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 if you're into content, I mean, you can start if you have like a little tripod or something, you can start filming all this stuff and it's like But Trent, you know, but Trent, do you eat like shit? Tell the truth. Do not lie to Hannah. I'll be straight with you. I eat like garbage. Yeah, I knew it. I felt it right through the vocals. You, you know I, it. I knew. I could tell that Mufasa knocked you out, and because you eat I'm dog a shit. Ass, that's why. Oh, yeah, dude. See, this, see, this gotta, is, okay, this so, is yeah. what really help yeah. me here, Hannah. Like, this is yes. the thing. Like, this like Trent's gonna like run all through Dallas. Meanwhile, eat like forty yeah. like like, no. like chocolate puffs. Oh, and, it's, like, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not that bad. Like, I'm still eating chicken and rice, but yeah, I, I don't cool, eat bro. I'm glad you ate some fucking chicken thing. once. You're eating dog shit, and you, know, Trent, do not lie to Hannah. Trent, do you eat processed foods? Oh, a ton. Yes. Do you eat a lot of sugar? Yes. Yeah. He's how much? Right now. How much water do you drink a day? Not much. I try to. I try to at least get a gallon in. That's a lot. That's a lot. I don't drink water for shit. I'm you gonna dry drink, up and disappear. You, you need to drink I, water. I basically never drink water in my but life. But what do you That's really drink? A gallon drink. of water? Yeah. No. He figured out hack out. It, it's, it's like the gallons that you get from You know why he drinks a lot of water? I, I did a bad, like, I'll tell I you what, like exactly. Shit. I yeah. did a bad job with my guests. It's cliche. All these people walk around my <laughs> office, they're like, look at my gallon, and then I look at their fucking table and they've got like Taco Bell and fucking Twizzlers everywhere. Right, like, right. Like people love to do Band-Aids. Right. They're like, yo, I run a 5K and I drink water. Cool, bro, you ate 43 Twinkies this week. Right. How many vegetables do you, do you eat a day? Six. I try to at least do a handful of broccoli a day, but like, see, see, like I'm still eating like crap, but I'm doing like a handful of veggies essentially for like two meals. So okay. it doesn't really do anything. Okay, I would just, okay, so in addition to like those agility and endurance things, you're obviously your water intake is great, but you cr- you clearly need to switch up what you're eating. And I would say try and eat a majority of vegetables on your plate with like, you know, a six to eight ounce piece of protein and cut out all of your processed shit. And then if you're hungry, you should be snacking on. Yeah, a lot of people like talk to me. I want to jump snacking? in this. Yeah, I'm I like, think it's really important to I do eat too. when you're hungry. I agree. Right? You gotta Otherwise, you're your finished. Body. Right. You're gonna like. It, I used to not eat during. I still basically don't eat during the day. But when when what would happen is I would eat seven thousand calories at like ten p.m. Yeah, terrible. Don't. You should definitely not be eating at least two and a half hours before you go to bed because your body like okay. really digests and detoxes while you're sleeping. So. Definitely, and you should be drinking two glasses of water before you go to bed, and two glasses of water as soon as you wake and up. You, like no joke, like like this is like the cliche. Like I'm dying to ask you this. Like straight up, like and don't lie to me. Like you're nailing this two glass thing in the morning and night. Oh hell yeah, seven days a week. Oh, that is F- like religion to you. Oh my god, like just like taking a you shower. You want to know a crazy no, yeah, thing I that I do also? Yes. I don't eat and drink at the same time. Because for optimal digestion, you're supposed to drink water 45 minutes before and after a meal. I talk about it in my book. Really? Trent, honestly, yeah. bro, this stuff sounds too hard. Just eat like Jack it's in the not, Box. It's honestly not that hard. <laughs> it's like small, <laughs> conscious things that you should be doing. But I was going to say about snacking, you should definitely be snacking on veggies, um, some like okay. protein, whether it's like whether you're make, eating like carrots and hummus or even just like some sliced turkey. Like just don't eat. How do you feel? How do you feel about flatbread? Like wheat flatbread. Is no, that no like dude, that's no, fucking no, no. hard. No. Like, yeah, dude, def not. You, what are you talking about? See, flatbread? That, are you going to Panera? Like, what's happening yeah. here? Dude, you're like no, me. Like, like I'm about to go to Carbone back. after this, and I'm about to eat so much spaghetti and just think about how <laughs> fucked up this all is because Hannah just told me With not to wine, do any of this right? shit. With yeah, I'm going to have like 14 glasses of wine and like nine pieces of bread and like <laughs> triple spaghetti special. And it's only fucking Monday, bro. That's right. 
but then I won't eat Tuesday. True. Like I, by the way, See, I that's lo- terrible. By the way, that's terrible. You know, this is where listening to your body's interesting, and I believe you, and I do believe that there are be- like I always like in marketing. There's best case strategies, mm-hmm. and then there's nuances. I will tell you as as a 43 year old, no question. I'm not talking about gorging, and then take away gorging. Like when I'm eating properly. At my best, when I'm eating properly consistently and still having a fast day, really feels not, I don't want to fast to act cool or I think it's right. It's crazy how much my body reacts. Having a fast day is very, very good for you. God, I believe it. It's very good I for really, you. I really, it's very weird for me. Like Your deep, organs need to like have some rest time. I believe it. Mm-hmm. Do you ever, or is it Absolutely. too hard? Yeah, yeah. Consistently I'll do a wa- or randomly? I'll, randomly. Yeah. I'll do a water day every now and then. I don't necessarily promote it do you, or talk about it on like the internet. Do you feel like you do it when get... you feel like you slipped? Like, is there, like, I've always. In no, a, I actually mm. end up doing it when I've been really, really good because I find that when you're doing things in a really consistent, good manner, your body benefits even, even more. more when you have like a detox day. Trent, thanks for calling, brother. Yo, so here, wait, 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 super quick. Uh, two things. So you're you're talking about like drinking a lot of water. What about energy drinks? Because I drink Celsius. Dude, what are you eat? fucking talking about? Def no, don't. You're no, joking, straight right? Up, straight up, straight up. No, no, you're no, joking, no, right? That stuff is garbage. No, because okay, so no more of that. No, no, dude, no more of that. Okay, okay, because like I, I can't even I tell if you're joking. Best shape. Okay. No, I'm being dead serious. I could tell. Uh, dude, you I, just I called and said, yo, I so want to crush it, but real quick, so I'm eating flatbreads and Red Bull. Like, do you think I'm okay? <laughs> <laughs> do you think I'm good? I don't get shit for sleep. Oh, God. Okay. Um, yeah, then other than that, how much wine do I have to buy? To See, we're just going bad on the uh, on the whole fitness thing here. How much wine do I have to buy to be able to meet you in October? Because I'm coming out to New York City. Uh, me and my fiance are coming out there to experience the New York like a, how much so wine look, do I have honestly, to the, the real answer is way, way more than you want to hear because I think okay. Nate and Trouty have been bartering it for like ten thousand dollars worth of wine. So we're talking like fifty cases. But your energy is so good, and I like you. So send me an email and let me see how I can sneak you in for at least a minute. Dude, oh my God, you're making my freaking life right now. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude, I'm flattered. We'll talk soon. All right, more calls, Trent. Uh, <laughs> no, but you know what's interesting? And I'm sitting there listening, and he's obviously excited, nice kid. And like for a minute there, I thought he was jo- like I honestly believe he wasn't like for if you asked me to like to bet right now, I don't think he was joking. And what's funny about that is no different than like being overeducated in whether it's wine or the New York Jets or marketing. You know, like boy, he really thought like energy drinks and flatbreads yeah, were decently also, okay. It was also crazy to like then hear how disconnected his goals are from his like day to day, right? He had these big goals of being the Spartan, doing the Spartan races, his like, you know, whatever with the 5Ks and whatnot. But yet his daily are, are just like saying the opposite. And by that. the way, it's scary. You can't outwork your mouth. Like, like I work out for real now and like when you're not eating well, see ya. Hello? Hello, it's Gary Vaynerchuk with Hannah Brofman. Yeah, okay. All right, I promised my husband I would not freak out, so we're good. Olive, <laughs> got Olive where, do you, where, do you, where do you live? I'm girling on the inside, we're good. <laughs> I love your name, Olive, it's so pretty. Thank you. Where do you Thank live? Thank you so much. Say that again? Where do you live? Um, I'm in Tampa, Florida. I just moved here from uh, from California. My husband just retired from the military, so we're settled in, we're good to go. Thank you so awesome. much for his service. What 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 can we answer for you? Okay, so here's what I'm doing right now. I'm already uh, coaching. I'm a health and wellness coach. Um, I've done NPC competition before. That's not my route. That's not what I want to do. Um, I really want to get back to like the holistic approach uh, for clients. So I'm just trying to teach them the same things as you, Hannah, like love yourself, take, it, take good care of yourself. I love that. Thank you. But I only started in November. I know, Gary, patience. I got you. But I need to work on some products to like supplement my income in the meantime until my client list boosts up. Real quick, before you go anywhere further, because this is super important for a lot of people, a lot of people try to build an audience and then they want to monetize, right? The problem right. is they try to monetize their audience too soon and what ends up happening is you never end up building an audience because at 300 or 3,000 or whatever it may be, 
you get into a place where you went in for the sale before you romanced your audience. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I was able to become who I was was I was building a wine business on the side so for a deck, even to this point, I don't monetize my audience the way most people do and, and I don't even care if people buy wine or sneakers which is completely left field from what I do. There is, you know, that that content 86 page deck I put out, that's normally the move for somebody like me where you charge $3,000 for that ebook. I would tell you the number one, and this is, I'm so glad you asked this Olive because it gives me an opportunity to deliver kind of my 2019 like thing that I thought of on the beach which is if I could give one great piece of advice to anybody, if you're mm-hmm. building a health and wellness brand to your audience, before doing what everybody tells you on the internet, all these internet marketers, which is you need an $89 product Mm -hmm. to monetize to them, which tunes everybody out, half the room just rolled their eyes because we all see it. I want you to monetize something that has nothing to do with that side of your life so that you could afford to continue to organically build an audience. I believe that the reason I'm so passionate about the flip life and selling and trading and buying tchotchkes and dollar stores and garage sales is you will be so much more financially successful if you figure out how to flip on the side and make 4,000 you know, or 3,000 or $2,000 a month if you need to subsidize because the second you start selling a cliche affiliate powder shake or a detox this, or you try to create your own $239, you know, open right now, pre-sale at $99, you become one of them, which is 99% of what we see on Instagram, which is why 99% of people don't win. I can't even believe that I, first of all, that was awesome, and I can't believe that I feel like I'm one of those people. I've just now, for the first time in seven or eight years, put out a product, yep. Um, and I've literally spent this whole time the rom- book yeah the book being the product but this whole time I've really romanced my audience and tried to get, get them in love with like the types of messaging and content that I put out with and then you know only now and, really and you and I for different circumstances and realities because we built other businesses before could afford not having to monetize our audience. Right. When I hear Olive calling and the millions of emails and DMs that I get a year uh, from people that need to monetize and have decided I'm going to be a personal brand on this and I'm gonna sell this thing. Olive, my advice, and I'm not kidding, it like really dawned on me during vacation, because you get to think on a hammock in like Mexico, like I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. If I put these two passions together, I can help people learn how to buy and sell things like in, from garage sales and th- like mm-hmm. I, I believe every woman that has a fashion sense can dominate the goodwill. Yeah. This is a, sure. I, I really I do. Yeah. And I, I actually think a lot of, Olive, I actually think you in Tampa from dollar stores, thrift stores or buying bulk and doing retail arbitrage are more likely to make $5,000 a month doing that and still have time to build your fitness thing because I'm telling you right now, sister, if you come out with a dollar ninety nine, that two hundred dollar item, you're gonna you're not gonna build an actual audience. I I totally agree with you. And Gary, I'm not even kidding you. My flipping starts next week. We I just love you. Wrapped up. I, I'm not even kidding. I flipped a ton when we lived. We lived in Humboldt, California for yes. the past four years until Shout my husband retired. So uh, by the way, yeah. great cheese, Humboldt fog, baby. <laughs> Humboldt fog is the best. Yes. Um, but but don't eat it because Hannah will punch there. you. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I know. Cheese is terrible. I, I know. It's I like totally triple agree. cream, like like 47,000 calories in like one scoop on a Ritz cracker. But go ahead. Oh, it's so good. But I totally agree with you. And, you know, the, the four years that I lived in Humboldt, um, I was a trainer and nutrition coach. So currently my, my clients are still the ones who have been with me since the beginning. I took a little time off. I I went down another industry and then I came right back. So I still have the clients that I have right now are all ones that have worked with me before. So I'm not hard up. I'm mailing my list. I've put out maybe one or two offers just for the coaching. Yep. Um, but I haven't tried to sell them for anything else. And the coaching is my mailing list is I would say 98% people that I've already worked with before. Great. That's so awesome. look, the more, listen, I had a call today with a real estate company and they were asking why real estate agents are struggling on social and I'm like, cause they're trying to sell a home on every post, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, yep. like 
still to this day, I think Jab, 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 Right Hook, that book I wrote, impacted so many people because it gave them a very simple way to think about like give, 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 and then ask. Right. Too many people interpreted it as give, 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 and then take. Mm-hmm. When you right. eliminate, ex- if, if we can create something in 2019 where you eliminate expectation from your following, like that's the part that everybody's struggling with. They give yeah, with Yeah, they that. don't owe me shit. That's they right. right. That's right. exactly right, but everybody's like, yo, I've been putting out this great content, like now buy my shit. Like, have you been putting out great content? Right. And wait, have you been putting out great content the whole time just, I mean, it's literally guy and girl dynamics. I tell a lot of guys and or girls on a one-to-one, I'm like, look, it's dating dynamics. If you're such a nice guy to the girl, mainly just to hook up one time, like you're not gonna win that, you're not gonna right. build something meaningful. Right. You have a short-term agenda. Right. Right. And so like, why are you giving and what are you trying to create? So look, if you have the hustle of flipping and that can buy you air cover to disproportionately give content and all your best advice, which then gives you the advantage on once a year throwing that right hook for whatever you're trying to do within that fitness space, you will win. Love yeah, you're that. so right. You're, thank you. Gary, you I needed to hear that so bad. You don't understand how bad I needed to hear that. I, you know what's funny? It took me a long time. I've only started tapping into these feelings. Strategy matters. I've never realized that, like, it, like it's... It matters the most. Like, fitness. Like, yeah. do you want to hear my fitness story real quick? Sure. We'll keep Olive on? Yeah. On a plane, five years ago, I realized everything good in my life was when I was accountable to others, not myself. Mm. I'm a great boss because I want to deliver for them, not what they do for me. Right. I'm a good at my content. Like I'm a give, and mm-hmm. I get selfish out of the selfishness, uh, selflessness of it. Mm-hmm. On this plane, I realized right. I don't want to do more push-ups than I did yesterday. I don't compete with myself, like a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. I don't do it for me. So I realized, what if this is literally how it went down? What if I hired a full-time person who travels with me because I'm traveling a lot? Yeah. And what if I didn't want to let them down? Right. And literally that's what's happened. I figured out my fitness life because I don't want to let Mike or now Jordan, and now Mike's coming back for a tour and they're going to switch on and off. Like, I don't want to let them down. I love that. And that is like weird, right? Like, like I mean, it took it, me to, but it, it took strategy. It, it works for you. you know that's right. I mean? It's yeah. accountability. Yeah. It's, it's being accountable to every, it's why I'm winning. I'm accountable to everybody else, not my own selfish needs. So many people say to me, like, how, how do I get into working out? And I say, well, you know, obviously if you can, you can do stuff at home, but if you really want to do something and be accountable and actually get it done, book a workout with a friend because if you don't show up, you've let yeah, that friend right. down. You know what I mean? I think I mean? there's people like that. Olive, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, the other thing I've been thinking a lot about about this advice while we've been like talking about other things if you make that right hook back to January 8th of Hannah's book coming out, which is strategic by Harper Collins, is like these are books over indexed during this time. I do believe, though Hannah's right, always the right time to do the right thing. But if, if we're talking business now, back to strategy, I do believe that if you did something where the opening for whatever service you want to sell goes from December 15th to January 15th, you're gonna get two bites at the apple. In December 15th, people are festive, people get their bonuses, people like are in a buying spirit, so you'll convert an audience. And on uh-huh. January 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, people start dwelling and start worrying that they haven't kicked themselves into gear. Right. I think if you created that month that you ele- like and stayed consistent, did it every year, you're making a promise to the audience that I'm never gonna try to monetize you except for this window, you'll see some results from that as well. I, I agree. That. I love it. Cool. Good luck. Bye, Olive. Thank you Bye, so Olive. much, Thanks. Gary. Bye, Hannah. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. I'm pumped for Olive. She got there. Let's get one more in. Before we get this, like, you can set it up, but what do we want to cover before we get in one more call and wrap this up today? What else should people who are watching, you know, for example, tons of entrepreneurs, probably 75% male too. Okay. So like, let's, you know, obviously one of the things I was, you know, I don't have a lot of people on a second time. It means I like you. Thank you. I wanted to have you on because I know you're, I know enough about you in culture that you're going to crush your audience. You're going to be on other podcast shows, TV, whatever. I was excited because I think your message really matters to, you know, to 
a lot of my audience. Yeah. And I don't honestly think Rick in Iowa, 23 year old cliche digital marketer is gonna go run out and pick up your book if he's not watching right now. Totally. But I think he should. Yeah, so I mean, you know, this book really is geared for everyone le- like wanting to learn more about themselves. And I give my personal anecdotes um, that kind of really affected me and what made me want to affect change within my lifestyle. Um, in addition to kind of those uh philosophies and kind of expert advice from a lot of people who I've uh, met over the years who I constantly rely on. Um, There's a ton of delicious recipes in there that anyone can make. Uh, And there's just like, you know, it's just good knowledge also on how your body works. Where um, in this world does your extremely handsome husband live his life? Um, So my husband is like kind of, we're like almost the same person. We're very, he's very healthy as well. I mean, he forget about the health thing. Do you actually, in a macro, think you guys are super similar? We, I do. So I have a very interesting thesis about this. Uh oh, I'm it, scared. It means that you really love yourself. Interesting. So I think that about me. My my wife and I have a lot of similarities, and I think it means that I love myself. You know, like like I do think that like there's a really interesting insight that you decided to spend your whole life with somebody that's it's just, just like, like me. You. Yeah, I guess that's kind of there's very a self esteem thing there that I'm trying to figure out. We're also both Scorpios. Um, I am as well. Oh, you are. When's your birthday? October twenty sixth. Oh, you're an October Scorpio. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I knew you guys would love that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I knew that would deliver. When's awesome. your birthday? I'm November 14th. Oh, you're the 14th. Yeah. My cousin's the 14th. Brendan's November 3rd. I like it. Um, but honestly, you know, he. It's funny. <laughs> By the way, real quick, though- team. I need a T-shirt. I need it now. I'm being serious. Custom T-shirt. Oh, dot 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 dot. You're an October Scorpio. I want to rock that. Okay. Well, I- and when you see me in the airport rocking that, recall this podcast. People always, people do say that to me a lot. They're like, oh, you're a baby Scorpio. And I'm like, well, don't forget that baby Scorpions have a bigger sting. Really? Just FYI. Um, but I was going to say also about Brendan. I just think October's not as cool as November. It's <laughs> way cooler. Are you November too? She's also a Scorpio. November. I know. Love it. Okay. I guys. really do gravitate towards like... November people. I really, there's something. You mean Scorpio? You're November too? You mean Ooh, Scorpios, you. by yeah, the way. Yeah, you're right. Because what are they after? What's on the back of Scorpio? Um, Sag, right? Sagittarius. <laughs> You're a Sag? Dude, what the fuck? Everything was going so well. Um, wait, but I was gonna say Oh, wait, about- wait, real quick. Now I'm really interrupting, but I have to deliver this. Okay, tell me. Soft tissue. Okay. Where do you sit, if at all, on soft tissue work? Do you so, know what I'm talking yeah, about? Your fascia? Yes. Yeah, it's super important. You gotta massage that, work it out. It's like, you know, it's the, your biggest organ. You know they're laughing because this is like my number like while we're, I don't know if you were noticing, I just found a new Yeah, sp- you gotta, you gotta Hannah, work Please help spots. me, I, and I don't know if this is your area of like deep expertise or like, like I believe, so me, mm-hmm. I will tell you that I have had a bad back because I worked in my dad's liquor store when I was a kid, mm-hmm. my whole life. Mm-hmm. It is little. It's changed your life doing soft t- tissue work? No, 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 no. What? Like really changed my life. Yeah. I think it's a conspiracy. I think the entire chiropractor, like massage industry, is suppressing the right. soft tissue industry right. because I'm completely and utterly convinced so, on fascia work, like you would not believe. So fascia work is really, really important, and also your lymph, um, your whole lymphatic si- system lies in your soft tissue, and so like a lymphatic massage is very soft, but it's engaging the way you, um, the way you get rid of toxins out of your body. The amount of toxins that I've gotten out of my body in the last thirty six months that has completely. And I mean, from a quality day to day life perspective. Do you see a difference in like the quality of your legs? No, no, you, like, like I'm doing, everywhere. Like no, no, like I'm. Listen, I can't. I every time I get a chance to sell this, I do because it because the happiness that I have that I discovered this. My quality of life is so much greater. Mm-hmm. Like it was real restrictive pain. Like it restricts your motion. In totally, a, and you don't even and know. So water retention really lies within the soft tissue. I didn't know that since I drink no water. Number two, okay, well, we'll have to address that. Yeah. Number two, you're talking to somebody who works out seven days a week. What does that mean? Four to five days real, two days, you know, we do soft tissue work. Like I will roll yeah. and like and like hardcore you gotta stuff. You gotta get that lactic for acid out. an hour. Yeah. Not two minutes, like I see other people, right? They'll do it for two, three minutes and then they work out. Minimum, I'll roll for 15 to 20 minutes a day. By the way, that I think that's gonna be one of the largest trends in 2019 within the wellness world is recovery and soft tissue work. So it's so funny. I think that we should start a business. 
because I think you have a great brand. Let me I know. literally want to start. I think like the way Rumble's crushed it and 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 Soul Cycle and like all the trends. I'm not kidding. And the funny thing is, I think people would be blown away because think about how lazy everyone is. Imagine a place where you walk in and you do nothing. So there's a place in Flatiron that's like all about stretching. I know about that. Yeah, but, but I'm talking. I, I think there needs. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm talking fascia work. Yeah, soft tissue work, which by the way hurts like fucking. Like I'm like cr- like tears. Yeah, and I'm good with pain tolerance, but like literally just. No, no. I'm telling. Seriously. Like. If you're, like you know, if your shit's really fucked up like mine is, it's literally to the touch. Right. And let me just explain how crazy soft tissue work is. I've been doing it now for two and a half years every day and four days ago, I realized how fucked up my front, what is this? Um, your quad? My front quad is. Literally me and Jordan, like I was like, Jordan, there's something. And I was like trying to, and like finally, and like you got in there, but I'm like, it's like right here. It's right. not like it wasn't like my first thing was the adductor. Yeah, which cha- I mean, guys, soft tissue fascia. I can't. I'm telling you, it's the one that 90 percent of people that get massages and chiropractor this and my fucking disc that, like neck work. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like my, like I'm trying to like figure out the fascia of my eye pockets. Mm-hmm. Like I'm all over this. Totally. I actually had to work out my quads yesterday because my calves were so tight and like your calves are connected to your quads and so I didn't even focus on my quads even though that was where the majority of the pain and tightness was it. coming from. It's so all coming from my quads. One last one. I'm really into this one. I cuz it's I think it's for the normal person, the thing that's really bothering them in their lives. People have headaches because of their neck. Totally. And it's literally just your shoulder and sometimes it's your rib cage. I mean, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Who's I this? Agree. Ben. Gary V, how are you, good sir? I'm tremendous. Please say hello to Hannah. Hi. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Hannah. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So great to talk to you guys. Uh, love love your content, Gary and, and Hannah. Uh, first question, do you have this book available in audio format? I do, absolutely. Did you read oh. it? I only read. I was only read my intro. I actually tried to read the whole book, but it wasn't in my contract that I signed two years ago. I'm That's looking. Okay. I'm looking it's at my one. publisher right now, but <laughs> I did try to read it myself. But they said no, ma'am. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Is that right? Is that you guys decided a professional would do better? Like, that's okay. Like, I think that's right. I'm like, like I'm not potential. Michelle Obama. You know what I mean? I guess that's what they were thinking. Do what you do best and outsource the rest. T- Look, you, I'll ben. tell you, thank my you, singular <laughs> most hated thing professionally that I do is read my own book for audio. I have to do it because I have to do it. Yeah, I mean, just the thought that my book would not be me reading it just No, feels your boring. voice is like, it's so synonymous with plus, like, your brand. Plus, I improv the whole way, but I'm terrible. I have actually what genuinely- you improv? You're not, like, not reading, the, like you're Yeah, just... I go create, like, what? you should see the people like when I'm in recording studio, they're like, you know, straight men and women, they're used to like everybody being professional. Yeah. I'm in like second sentence, I'm like, yeah, actually, you know what? I changed my mind on, and you could see their head pop up and be like, even though they were warned by the publisher because I've done five of them, they're like, he'll probably go off script. I go off the reservation. <laughs> I think that would be a YouTube goal to watch you in a studio for. Well, you know what? I agree, minutes. Ben. I agree, ben, ben. You know what's <laughs> funny is it's real torture for me because I would. I often say one of the things I do. I'm really not a good reader. I've actually genuinely believe I've become a better reader out of the sheer pressure of having to read my book in audiobook form. Uh, it actually did teach me learning patterns of like reading ahead, like things I yeah, didn't used to I'm do. Not it's a great really weird. Either. Yeah. Um, ben, are you an audio book consumer only? Uh, not, not only, but it, it helps because I, you know, I'm on the road a lot. I, I'm just constantly here, there and everywhere. And I feel that I understand it better when I hear it. And do you, and as just, this is now fun for my own fun. Cause I think um, I'm interested. Do you feel like you're even leaning more into audiobooks because of the way podcasts and other things have happened in culture? Uh, no, I have ADHD and an eighth grade education and reading was one of the things that I really, really struggled with and, and that's the honest truth. So yeah. hearing it, it's a lot better. I learned by seeing things yep. and, but reading it was, it, it's just tough. Yeah. The other question I had for, uh, for you was how did people from your past lifestyle, you said you did, mm-hmm. you know, the nightlife thing for a couple of years. I played in bands for years and. I got out of that and you know changed changed the script, flipped it up. 
Yeah. Um, how, how did how did your friends and, and your family react to that? And, and how have they taken to the book? Um, so in the beginning, it's funny because when I started kind of posting, um, I, I was kind of already on the journey, but I wasn't necessarily talking about it with a and lot of people. And where did you first start? talking about it because it's a while ago so it was on instagram really and okay. in, in, i guess in early 2012 yeah, um and i was kind of showcasing my like healthy habits and different recipes and what i was doing at the gym and i was using this hashtag which is now the name of my company hb fit and i realized that when i was going out at night some of my friends were calling me HB fit and they were asking me like what did I do in the gym that day and I just realized that this conversation completely was changing and so once I kind of realized that my even just my friends were responding to the type of content I was putting out that I wanted to create a place where we could talk about these things in longer form content I think my family was super excited um, just because I kind of grew up in a really active um, home and my mom is like a vegetarian Reiki master like crystal lover you know what I mean so she was oh is wow. your mom crystalled out oh crystalled out she used to tape crystals to her chakra her to all of her chakras and then like answer the door for the FedEx guy and I'd be like oh my god mom like the crystal culture is intense it's really intense I mean she like as a chanter she used to study with a kahuna like the whole thing Some of so that, like, yeah it's, I it's mean it's funny no I was about to laugh at myself it's funny what I think is wild like crystals but I think you should be a monk like like you know like, right, like it's right, funny sure. how like people pick and shit it's like that dude that called first he's like yo I'm super healthy gallon of water but I eat Taco Bell. Right, exactly, you know, like, exactly. Pick and choose. So I think my mom was... But your mom was ahead on oh, that crystal Oh, totally, thing. totally. She's been like that since like the 70s. And so I think she was really excited about me kind of going down that journey and kind of exploring that for myself. Um, and then there were definitely people who kind of didn't get it and thought it was all bullshit and you were trying to be goody two shoes yeah to totally like just drink this great goose and yeah, shut the fuck up totally yeah. and like drink your tequila yeah. and like you know get blackout like we know you used to right type of thing so like, what, you're not blackout Bronfman anymore yeah, yeah literally, yeah, literally. <laughs> I actually used to be called Bogart Bronfman if you really want to know <laughs> I love um, it. so so yeah so there were you know there were believers and there were haters and like everything in between but I kind of just stuck down my path and and now like people it's so funny like putting out a book some people have come out of the woodwork to tell me how proud they are of me and I haven't even heard from these people in so long and and to be honest the you know just the the reaction I'm getting from the book from my fans and followers has been so meaningful and having these meetups where I get to like sign people's books and people within where'd that you do one your, where'd you do your Tuesday last week did you do I, did, I did on Wednesday and I did it at this place called Bombberry in um in, on Bleecker Street and I think we had like 150 people come and the Amazing. signing took almost two hours oh, and I slow, gave you're a slow signer well I gave everyone I'm like kidding, a minute kidding, and kidding. a half to like chat with me oh, I get it and I've people really there. told me like insane stories like about abusive relationships and getting over lymphoma like it was just it was really intense and I and they were telling me about the part that I played for them in their journey and it's just it's been did anybody come out of the old woodworks and be like yo do you remember the time we blacked out in the club no no not yet not yet but I'm sure those will come (laughs) if you're one of those people reach out to Hannah I'm about to do my 10 year I'm gonna do my 10 year (laughs) challenge on Instagram you know how people are doing that right now and the photo I'm gonna use uh, spoiler alert is literally me at the Jane in 2009 DJing with half of my head shaved and a cigarette in one hand so like and is yeah. your next post going to be an egg after that? No. What the hell's going on with this damn egg? Well, what's going on? And we were just saying before we got here, it's like there's this really fun moment going around on Instagram. Literally two massive memes. Like Instagram's been super quiet. Very Like early Twitter had these things happen all the time where like everybody would get on board on something. Like Twitter's not been like that at all. And then literally the 10-year challenge and the egg have happened literally within 24 hours yeah, of each other. Yeah, it's crazy. Which I actually think maybe it'll be, if there's a third one that drops this week, it's gonna be like, Get ready for like a year or two of like just everybody trying to create these things on Instagram. Wow. Which will probably ruin Instagram and lead it to become MySpace. Right. Which oh. will then make all of you vulnerable. Yes, Ben. And your careers will be over. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt. But the, the last thing I just wanted to say is, you know, you and I have a very small thing in common. You wrote a book about, about health and, and wellness. I wrote a big book about it. It's called Because Your Mommy Does CrossFit. But mine is, is, is slightly different than yours. It's not really giving advice. Uh, like yours is yours is 
far more better and, and superior. So I look forward to downloading yours because uh, I just think it's going to be awesome. Oh, well, Th- thank you so much. I really friend. hope you I wish, yeah, I hope have a great love year. It. Take care. Take care. What this a sweetie. Was fun. Yeah, that was awesome. Awesome. Uh, I want to buy 100 copies. So have reach out to me. What? I'm going to put them in the lobby of Vayner Media so You're that people can and grab it. And uh, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Bye, everyone. Later.